Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm back. I'm feeling really, really good. I'm really surprised after two weeks and thinking that I was going to be tired, I was going to be winded, I was going to have some troubles with something. I feel good. I feel really, really good. Now, there's a few comments on my video of me being in the hospital that uh, say something about karma. All right. Now, you have to believe in karma for, I guess, something to happen. I don't know how that works, but I don't believe in karma. I believe you do shit to yourself and you suffer the consequences later on, all right? You put your foot in your mouth on the internet and you suffer consequences from other people that are kind of either against you or for you. Now, same thing goes with this. I don't believe in karma. I did this to myself and I recovered from it. Actually, I am really surprised at how good I feel. I feel really, really good. Today I went to see my doctor and the heart doctor did a EKG on me. It looks fine. Um, changing up my medication. So I won't be taking some of the medication that I'm on now. Uh, things are working really well. I gotta go for uh, cardiotherapy and which is basically going to be exercising. I lost a little bit of weight, even though it may not be able to tell it. I went in today and they weighed me over at the hospital. I've lost a little, which is great because that gives you kind of like uh, an incentive. It gets you excited because you're actually seeing some type of progress in what you're doing. The smoking, on the other hand, while well, I have to say that I still smoke, but I'm not smoking three packs a day anymore. Uh, I have to say this because it's already happened one time in the whole two weeks that I have smoked a whole pack in one day, so I can't leave that or rule that out. But anyways, it's getting better and changes are being made. So I have some unboxing to do, actually I have quite a bit of unboxings to do. Uh, shit has been kind of piling up over here and I haven't really been doing too much with it because the last two weeks I've been kind of taking it easy a little bit. So. Here is one unboxing. I already know what it is. I know who it's from. And I'm excited to see what it is, actually. So, open her up. All right, so first off, we have a Jackson Body, Jackson B Body. Flat black, kind of small, loaded, damaged corner over here, which that is not that going to be that hard to fix. Hardtail, no push and pull, three-way switch, needs a neck, and I have got necks for this, so this is not that big of a deal as well. All right, let's put that off to the side because I know this box has more stuff in it. All right, here's an Ibanez Geo neck, which is in really good shape. No issues with it. Stock tuners with the plastic still on the back. So I'm sure I could find some use for that. Hell, I might go on the jacks and if everything lines up right. So is there anything else in there? here? Oh, that's it for this one. So let me get this mess cleaned up around me and put this stuff Away. All right, so next up I have some cloth and a couple of necks and as you can see there's no Chinese or Orange tape on these boxes. I found somebody to make these necks for me Now this is something that I was going to plan to do a long time ago My father when he used to do the custom painting on motorcycles and stuff uh, the old 70s 60s 70s type style into the 80s was using some sort of well either your kitchen table or curtains or you know whatever this is a piece of lace okay and I have some more lace coming as well and there is a way of transferring this to the body of a guitar without having to glue this to the body of the guitar and a lot of the old lowriders if you're into lowrider cars like I am uh, 
case you guys didn't know, yes, I owned a lowrider, and I love the nostalgic look of them. Uh, hydraulics, airbags, whatever. This was something that we used to be done to a lot of lowriders back in the day. Very easy to do and makes a kick-ass design on whatever you're putting it on. This will be for something later. So I got two necks over here to open. And like I said, these are not from China. Hopefully I got this opened enough. Oh, why'd you do this? Why'd you give me this stuff? I think this shit. All right, no instructions. Somebody I met on the internet who makes guitar necks. And this kindly helped me out with this. So this is one scale length of a V-neck, and there's no holes drilled in it. This is pretty much rough. I asked them not to put a finish on it, not to put anything on there. I wanted a raw finished neck. This way I could finish it myself. And let's get into number two. Like they use whatever they could use to pack these things up with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I gotta take this garbage out. So these are two different scale lengths. In raw form. Again, no drilling. They did a beautiful job on this. Yeah, so let's see here. Yep, they are two different scale lengths, as you can see here. This one's a little bit longer. Those are before another project. So back to cleaning up this mess. All right, so this Git Fiddle right here is, Git Fiddle, I think, yeah, Git Fiddle, I think that's what you call it, is a special one. And this one here came from somebody that I've done several guitars for. So we have here a guitar case. Alright, so I'm going to pull that same out. Wow, this thing's got some weight to it. This is heavy. So let me bring you in over here, and you can see what this thing is. Up close and pushy you know. Alright, so here we are, up close. Anything on the back? Nope. Oh, ho, ho, look at this puppy. So, this is a Kramer. We packed it really, really nice. Floyd Rose trim. These are real dollar bills. Now, he did this himself uh, years ago. And there's some rippling in the finish over here. It's not really nice and flat. It's got a little bit of a haze on it. So the black doesn't really look black. It looks more of a gray. Uh, on the back of this is the back of the bills. And this is a Kramer. Very nice. Very nice guitar. And what he wants is he wants the black to be something else as far as a fade goes or burst and to re-clear coat this. Now there's supposed to be an issue somewhere over here where this had two humbuckers on it 
and there's supposed to be an issue. Kind of see it, kind of feel it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix all that. Oh yeah. So there you go. The only thing I say when you put a guitar in a case, take this off. Can you take it off? Does it come off? It unscrews. I don't know if it's coming up or not. Oh no, it's kind of one of those. All right, you gotta hold the nut and then unscrew it. All right. Well, yeah, this is going to be a nice job. And the headstock also has a dollar bill or two attached to it as well. And it's a Kramer. She is a Kramer. Beautiful guitar. I actually love this thing the way it looks. But I never thought of using dollar bills. Now, these are real dollar bills. And the de denominators are supposed to be within sequence from what he said. And I'm not sure. I'll have to look into it more. Hi, Eric. I have a guitar for you to look at. This is a, a Kramer. Um, I'm not sure I remember what model. Pacer, Focus, something like that back in the day. I uh, refinished it when I was working at a music store back in 1985 with these dollar bills. In fact, they're all, I think they're consecutive serial numbers. Uh, anyway, um, it had a neck pickup that's been filled. It was Bondo filled. And you can see that that has bubbled up over the last several decades. And the whole finish is kind of crappy, but it's the best we knew how to do back in the day. Um, I'm wondering if that's something that you could, I don't know, restore, fix, repair, make it so the finish is nice again. Um, kind of hide where that pickup used to be without, I mean, I don't want the dollar bills coming up, but maybe the finish is thick enough that you could, I have no idea. I'm just showing you, tell you, ask you what you think. Of course, the uh, neck could probably use a little bit of a, a touch. The, uh, the headstock also is a little rough finish. You can see it with the reflection in the light. And then the back, the back is the backs of the dollars. Actually, the back's not in bad shape. A lot of scratches on the plastic that didn't seem to show up onto the the finish. Well, maybe, yeah, it's not great. Anyway, um, love this old thing. Don't play it anymore. But maybe if it were uh, if it were fixed up and maybe I replaced that pickup. I don't. I'm not a big fan of whatever it is. Um, maybe that's something that uh, that you could do. Let me know. All right, so let's see what else I got going on over here. All right, so really, I've got nothing else. Sorry, guys. Other than a few things I have sitting on the counter over here. One's for home theater. The other one is for the car. And another box here is for, basically, they are guitar strings. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you anyways. See, I told you, the guitar strings. Yeah. Now, I picked up a few things for the car, which is, this is a, what they call um, driving lights for your vehicle, LED strips. I got two sets of these, and I picked up something that is an LED background. Well, I'll have to just show it to you. This here. Now there's three different types of these, and I perked up, picked up, perked up, picked up the first gen because the second gen and the third gen, they don't have issues with them, but they work differently than the first gen. The second gen, the colors are not as vibrant and not um, collaborated or calibrated with the TV picture. All right. They're different colors. Plus they have more LEDs, so it has a better of a white balance on the second gen. The third gen went back to the same style as this, as the first gen, with a different chip in it. And the reaction time and everything else works better, but the brightness really isn't there. So first gen is what I kept, what I went with. 
What it has is a camera that kind of goes over the top of your TV. You calibrate it with uh, six cubes that you put on your screen. It also has two satellites that go on each side of your TV and it brightens up the whole wall with whatever colors that are on your screen. No matter if you have, excuse me, blue here and red here, you'll have red and blue on your wall. So that's how that works and if it moves, well that moves on your wall as well as far as the color go. Everything is operated by a, it's either going with something like this with a camera or something that is HDMI. If you use the HDMI version, um, it may not work with other things that you have. Uh, so everything that goes to it has to be connected with HDMI in order for it to work properly. So I just went with the camera. All right, guys, that's it. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. Uh, the owner of the Jackson Neckle or Jackson uh, body over here, he knows who he is. I'm going to take care of you. The owner of the Kramer, I'll take care of you. And uh, yeah, for what I got going on as far as other projects go, you know I'll be taking care of it. All right, you guys take it easy. Have a good one. Catch up with you all later.